friend and welcome to this fall cozy kind of day video uh, this is a little bit of a different look for me with the lights but I'm um, trying something because it's a perfect fall kind of day and I want to walk through how I use my LUTs because this is a question that I get asked pretty regularly so it's important to say off the top that this is not a how-to color grading video this is not a professional color grading workflow video you're, you might even learn some things that aren't technically correct. I'm just walking through how I actually use the LUTs that I've made. So if you're someone who has bought my LUTs or if you're someone who is interested, then this will be really helpful. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be teaching proper methods and I'm not gonna be trying to act like I am. I am literally just going to walk through exactly how I use my LUTs to get the results that I achieve. And I'll talk a little bit about camera settings and I'll talk a little bit about computer settings, but this is not a technical video. This is primarily just a personal workflow sort of thing. So if you don't wanna watch it, go ahead and click off now because you're not gonna like the rest of it. So let's just keep moving. It's also important to clarify that I'm only gonna be walking through Fujifilm F-Log and Fujifilm Classic Chrome. Um, but the classic Chrome should apply if you're shooting Eterna or any other picture profile or film simulation on the Fuji cameras. So this is just going to be Fuji, F-Log, and classic Chrome footage that I'm gonna be walking through. I'm also not gonna walk through how to set up your camera for this. I have a video about my classic Chrome profile, which might need a little bit of updating, but it's still very relevant. Uh, I still shoot in almost the exact same profile and mode for the majority of my projects. But when I'm not using that, I'm probably using F-Log and F-Log settings and everything were covered in a very long video of mine. And there are other videos out there that might help you with that. So I'm not gonna be walking through camera settings. I'm not gonna be walking through exposure, things like that, how to get white balance right. Um, again, just gonna be pulling in clips, color grading them, walking through literally how I use the LUTs. So with all of that said, hopefully you are very clear on what this video is and what this video is not. And I think we can go ahead and dive into the computer so that we can see my settings and what software I'm using and walk through um, the beginning of the setup. All right, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve and this is version 17. I don't know how recent it is inside of version 17, but that's what we're working with is DaVinci Resolve 17. I specifically switched to DaVinci Resolve because I believe the color grading is significantly better than other programs. Um, I'm looking at you Premiere Pro and I did not enjoy using it. And so I switched to DaVinci Resolve for everything, editing, color grading, you name it. And I've loved it and have had awesome experiences. So anyway, let's walk through this footage real quick just so you can see what we're working with here, it's some um, classic Chrome footage. Uh, the first, let's see, 11 clips are classic Chrome, and then the next 10 clips are F-Log. And we're in a variety of lighting scenarios and scenes here. I tried to really put a variety in here. So you've got some nice backlight and even lighting, cooler environments, uh, and then you've got broad daylight, midday, 
And then you've got, again, midday, harsh sunlight. You've got nighttime underneath tungsten lights. You've got midday, harsh again. And then you've kind of a sunset soft look. And so just a variety of different scenarios, settings, and we'll walk through each one kind of as we go. Um, but just right out of the gate, uh, we should talk about the settings that I'm using. So I'm gonna press Shift-9, and Shift-9 is gonna pull up my um, project settings. And so the color management tab is the important one here. And I have it placed on DaVinci YRGB. I don't use the color manage tab. Um, again, this is not a technical video. I'm just telling you what I do here, and I have it on YRGB and I have it in Rec. 709A because I use an Apple computer. So more about the hardware, I'm using an Apple MacBook Pro and it has uh, four gigabytes of dedicated video. So I found that it works for me, but I would love to upgrade eventually so that I'd have a little bit of a faster machine. And then um, the Rec. 709 is important because that's what I always export in. And I'll touch on that a little bit later, but basically, this is important because I just continually find that Rec. 709 comparative to uh, Rec. 709A comparative to Rec. 709 Gamma um, has provided me the most consistent results across all platforms, all phones, all screens, and every uploading site that I've tried. So again, not exactly a technical video here, definitely not a technical video, but this is what has worked for me. It gives me great colors that I am happy with. So those are my settings inside of the color management tab. And then before we go too far, importantly, I should also say inside of my export settings, I always go to advanced and I force the Rec. 709, um, not Rec. 709A here. Um, I haven't found that actually to make a meaningful difference, but I go and I uh, force the color space tags to and gamma tag to Rec. 709 instead of saying same as project. I've just found that this has given me consistent results that work every time. So here we are inside of our color tab and we're just gonna go ahead and get started with a simple kind of copy paste. So, um, so I'm gonna take my LUT and I've applied it just by double clicking. So you can now see the little LUT grid on here and I'm gonna go ahead and press option one, and that's gonna save this color grade. Uh, technically, it'll save the whole node tree here. Uh, I'm gonna save that to my memory, and then I'm going to shift select all of these, and I'm gonna press command one. Now that's going to paste my LUT on top of all of these clips here, and then I'm gonna to go to the F log and I'm going to select my LUT, and I'll press option two, uh, just for fun. I can press a different memory, and then command two, and I'm gonna go add that to all of those. So here we are with the first clip. I can go ahead and close my LUTs, and I can close my clips. This is really good right off the bat. I really love this clip. I kind of knew it was going to be good, um, but, there is a little bit of peaking happening outside, but it looks like I already did that in camera and it rolls off so smoothly that I'm just fine with it. But I will say out of the gate, I really like hanging around uh, 90, 91% as kind of my, uh, the top of my scopes here, or maybe it's not a percentage, but 90 or 91, um, basically right here. So that's kind of my marker where I like to put the peak of my highlights. Um, you know, in a maximum dynamic scenario like this. So I like this, it's a little bit dark, but I kind of like the sort of contrasty mood. I could maybe lift my gamma just a little bit. Um, and now you can see just a little bit more inside of the detail here of the shadow, um, turning that on and off. I really like the color and I like the result of that right away. Then, here on this clip, it's way too warm right out of the gate. I did not white balance this very well in camera. Um, it just came out very, very, very warm. So again, remember you are not watching a technical video. This is how I operate. And so 
I'm gonna bring my lift down just a little bit so that I get the waveform here closer to a true black. And this was a very you know cloudy, overcast kind of day, so I'm actually gonna leave uh, my highlights right where they are. I'm not gonna you know get a technically correct you know, image here. I'm gonna leave that just where it was. But now I'm gonna use my gamma, my color wheel here, and I'm going to pull this back in just a little bit towards blue and green. This is where I'm headed with that. So all I did was I selected and I pulled it down just a little bit. And you can see here, that's the before and after. And then this is the before and after of just the gamma color adjustment. And I think I brought back you know, the right amount of green, I kept this warm, and the blue looks natural according to what I saw in real life. And so um, right there, instead of using white balance for me, I find adjusting my gamma first uh, on the color wheel ends up with a really smooth and pleasing uh, tone, I guess, um, to, to use kind of a buzzword. But uh, this image here, direct sunlight, naturally then, way too much contrast. Um, part of this is my LUT, uh, so I'm gonna dial back the contrast and um, bring it down just enough where I've got some breathing room here at my black point. And I'm actually okay with where that is, having that breathing room, because yeah, there's still plenty of black here, whether it was crushed when I was shooting, I don't know, but I kind of like where this image ends up with just that minor adjustment, um, it was very bright and very colorful, and so that ends up looking really good to me. So again, this is how I use my LUTs. This is actually what it would be like if you sat over my shoulder and watched me color grade a real project. Um, and so this one, I start by bringing down my gamma because it's just super hot. This scene is like really, really, really bright. Um, and then I bring down my gain here, um, like 90, 95, um, although I could bring it up, I suppose, a little more, but um, this was just a really hot shooting scenario. Um, but something I'm gonna show here is going into the log wheels. Yes, on Rec. 709 footage, I'm going into the log wheels, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down my mid-tone a little bit, and if you look at my waveform while I do this, I'm bringing down my wave, I'm bringing down my midtone, and you see it drop here. So you watch it drop, um, but I I actually don't like what that's doing to the image. It's not really doing much, in fact. Like if you look at the image, you can only see right about here in this shadow of the white dress, like that it's affecting. There's not really a whole lot going on there, but. If we bring it down just a little bit and then we actually change the range, the range points here are affecting where exactly these are effective. So I'm gonna lift the range of the highlights. And as I do this, you can see on the waveform, it's pulling more data downward. So um, basically this is what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say the highlights are actually at 750, you know? So I'm gonna say at 750 are the highlights. And then now when I pull things down, you can see it's pulling down a much broader range here. So as I pull that down, that starts to really round out the image for me. Um, and you can see what exactly that does here if you look uh, for instance, at the bridesmaids who are standing right in the sunlight, uh, it really pulls back a ton of detail more than just bringing down the gamma. And so that ends up looking pretty decent to me. Um, the white balance does need some work, um, so I'd probably just cool it off a little bit. Um, but that would, that would probably need some finessing over time. Um, probably not this environment specifically, but that'll be something that we talk about as well. But why don't we actually just address that real quick before I move on. Let's talk about color grading, lighting environments, color grading method and process, because how I use my LUTs is not just inside of software, clicking buttons and moving things around. 
It's also about how I've trained my eye to see colors and how you're interacting with the environment around you. So pro colorists inside of professional studios will have you know, everything thought out down to the paint color behind the screen, as well as any lighting inside of that environment. And I'm not in a position to be able to think through all those things. Uh, I just use my home office here. And so usually what I'll do is I will color grade any given film three to four times in different lighting environments. And in between each one, sometimes I only take one to two times, like tries, exports. But usually what's happening there for me is that I'm exporting it, I'm watching it back on several different devices, whether it be my computer, my iPhone, my television, you name it, I'm trying to watch it back on different devices to get a general feel for how the color grade went. And then I will revisit the color at different times during different days. Um, middle of the day, I'll go sit at my kitchen table and watch it or look at it. I'll do it in the nighttime, um, you know, sitting in my office when it's darker. And I'll do it here on a cloudy day with the tungsten light. And, and you'll find that as you do this two, three times, uh, you know, you export a project, you re-import it, and you do the whole thing. You'll get faster and faster and better and better at this. And particularly as you learn to trust the waveform and as you get more and more familiar with your viewing experience from your screen. So I, at this point, feel like between the waveforms on my uh, inside of DaVinci and just getting to know the colors of my Mac screen, I am very familiar now at this point with how to get the result that I want very quickly um, and typically in one to two tries, but sometimes you know I'll do it three, four tries. Um, but that's something that I should address before we just keep moving. But um, now we can get back to it. So on to the next clip here. Um, this has my LUT on it already and you can see that it's way too strong um, and that's largely just the contrast here. Uh, maybe a little bit of saturation um, but this already looks pretty good to me and a big part of that is because uh, these lights just you know have a really nice warm tone to them um, but they, they do give some hot spots on skin here um, so I'll bring that down just to soften it up uh, with the gain a little bit uh, and then I might cool it off just a touch but the skin looks pretty natural to me and there's a general like nice glow about the image and everything. So yeah, I, I think that looks good. And, and honestly, I would deliver that and uh, I did and I, I really liked it. So uh, now this clip here is uh, harsh sunlight, just really, really blasting here. Um, and so I'm gonna immediately just kind of turn down my highlights and then I'm gonna lift my gamma here and that's already getting me somewhere close to what I like, um, but I'll dial back the contrast just a bit uh, and then cool it down maybe just a touch. Um, but overall, honestly, this image looks super great in camera, so not hard to make it look great out of camera. The colors and everything are really pretty. Um, sometimes I actually play around with uh, bringing up my saturation in an environment like this. Um, because I just feel like the colors look so good you know, when they're brightly saturated when it's full sun like this. So, um, so yeah, bringing up my saturation, you'll see later, but sometimes that's something uh, that I do that I feel like you know, may not be all that popular. Um, but moving on to the next clip, again, has my LUT already on it, looks really great to me. Skin tones are awesome. Uh, the only thing I might do is that the sun was setting and it was kind of getting dim. So if I was actually going to match this to my eye that day, I would bring it down even just a little bit. And then as you see, when I do that, I bring it down. Uh, the skin definitely gets maybe a little too orangish here. So um, you know, I'm going to cool the whole thing, the whole image down just a bit. And you can see right away when I do that, if you, if you look at the skin, you can see it um, kind of coming back into a more natural color, but you can also see it happen here in the waveform 
um, particularly right here would be um, her skin tone would be these little bits of the waveform here um, and so as I dial that back in I'm sorry these would be the little bits of waveform there um, and as I dial that back in a little bit you can see that returning much closer uh, to the green and the blue so yeah that ends up looking pretty good to me um, again it's it's all about matching the experience of what you felt in the environment and then matching the emotion that you want to convey so um, then this I'm just going to be bringing it down to increase a little bit of that contrast and that pop and it looks really good um, I'm going to play around with increasing the saturation uh, because that sky was very teal that day so increase it just a little bit looks good to me no white balance needed or anything um, now this one very dark so let's go ahead and bring up the gamma here and right away you know that solves a lot of our problems um, I like the way the highlights are looking and again you know I'm more than okay with them being diminished because it was after sunset um, and I know that I'm probably not going to recover a lot of detail on this tree line here. Um, what is there, you know, it looks like I can get some of that green back here and this looks pretty good to me. Um, honestly, I could leave it dark because it really did look like this to my eye when you were there. Um, it was starting to get dark. This would be like, you know, technically correct image, but I don't find that to be all that inspiring and yeah it doesn't really engage with like what the environment felt like so uh, I'll bring that back down actually white balance is good I like it so uh, this here this example is a great example you know up to this point it's been a lot of natural light you know harsh light soft light you know bluer environments cooler darker whatever this is a mixed environment where you see lots of natural light out here but this room had almost none and so you can see from the shadows there was some overhead lights on and they were not the same white balance as the outdoors which is why this is very very blue but right away with the LUT on um, you know I had white balanced in camera I had white balanced to the interior of the room here so when I apply the LUT it looks pretty good but as you can see across the top of the waveform, very warm. So right away, probably with this image, instead of jumping straight to uh, correcting exposure, I'll just bring down my gamma here um, towards you know blue, green, um, so that there's less of a you know, pink, orange sort of thing going on. And right away, that to me looks really good. So that's before LUT by itself and then that's the corrected version and I think that looks great um, then you know I could bring down the gain just a bit to soften up that harsh sunlight out there but really you're not going to be worried about that when you're watching the clip you're going to be engaging with the interaction here um, that's happening inside of the room and so I don't obsess over little things like this you know I, I could and I could start, you know, throwing on multiple nodes and start isolating this environment so that I could, you know, kind of balance it out a little bit. But really, you're going to be engaged with the environment right here when you're watching it, especially as the client watches it. And so I'm not too worried about um, getting those technical details perfectly correct, but you could just pretty easily go ahead and soften that up just by warming up your gain. Um, so... Yeah, anyway, um, then this is the sparkler exit and it was very dark. And so the image comes out super orange and especially because it's really tough to white balance these scenarios and you've got this big, huge floodlight coming down from the barn. And so this floodlight is making everything, you know, kind of wacky. And so let's go ahead and just, um, try to get this somewhere close to normal in terms of the white balance and pretty much all i'm doing is i'm just grabbing my gamma here and then i'm going and looking to level them out um, i'm getting closer i should say 
Um, but now I'm just gonna lift my gamma just a little bit. Um, so before, after, uh, and then you can tell way too much teal and blue. So I actually am going to go into my gain here and I am gonna push that warmer just a bit. Um, and you'll see I kind of was counteracting myself because these are actually pretty sloppy categories here for making these sorts of adjustments. But it smoothed that out just a little bit so that it's not so harsh, warmed them back up just a bit. And again, when you're watching this in context, it looks really good. And I think it, I think it suits the feeling. So yeah, that would be something close to, and you see I, I actually was changing exposure while shooting, I shouldn't have done it. Um, so that would be a, a, different, uh, a different correction, which I actually already made a video about. So um, now onto the log. So right away, F log turned into my creative Big Sur Fuji LUT. Um, so you can see here, to me, this looks really good. Um, I maybe wouldn't even touch this clip. Seriously, if I brought this in, I might not touch it. I would maybe cool it down possibly um, and bring down the gain just a bit um, or go into my highlights here and really finesse that highlight just so that that's softer on the wall. But overall, I really like this image. I think it looks good, so I'm probably just gonna leave it where it is. Uh, this one, I'll get into a little bit of detail here about how I would address this. So I shot this to expose for the exterior, but um, it's still a little bit hot compared to the interior. So I'm actually gonna stay on my log tab here and I'm gonna bring down my highlights. So I'm really specifically bringing down that exterior and then I'm going to bring up my midtone. And when you see I lift my midtone, nothing much happens actually. But if I go expand my range down towards my shadows and I put it at probably, you know, just right at two. Um, so I'm, I'm about here. Now when I go and I lift my gamma just a bit, you'll start to see more of the interior here but I still have a pretty true black point. And this to me is a great image. I, I really like it. And it, all it took was just a little bit of finessing with uh, my log wheels here. And you can see what happens if I put my range back at the default level, I lose a bunch of this lift that's happening here on the interior. So when I, when I change my range and I drop my range down, that means that the midtones will now be affecting uh, anything from underneath 0.55 to anything above 0.2. And I did that just by looking at where the bulk of this data was. And so if I, if I lower that just a bit more, you can see it kind of lifting up even more, but, but I only wanted to just barely start getting into that. Um, and there you go. This is another shot where I might just lift the saturation um, and maybe cool it down just a touch. Um, well, I actually, I liked, how, I liked how it came straight out of camera. So I think I'm just gonna leave it there with just a little bit of an increase in saturation. And yeah, that's beautiful to me. So uh, on to the next clip. This is their dance. So, uh, very orange, very warm. Um, and as you can tell, actually, it's pretty dark. So uh, this is before, this is after. And so if I just lift my gain um, and go bring down my highlights inside of the log wheels, now you don't have, you know, your wall here is not completely blowing out. Um, though it doesn't look terrible. Um, but I'll bring it down and already you're most of the way there. And then I'm going to use my gamma here again to make my little bit of white balance adjustment. I'm going to lift my gamma. Um, and we're pretty close to a decent image here. Um, hard for me to see the colors 
perfectly right uh, in this sort of environment where I'm grading right now. But all in all, I'm happy with the grade you know, as it is right now. I think it looks pretty good, but it could use some more tweaking. Now with this clip, this is probably not a shot that I'm gonna end up using in this video. Um, but with the LUT right away, I actually like the look, exposed well in person, white balanced well, um, got it right in camera for the most part. I might just lift my gain because it was brighter than this. Um, but overall, right away for the most part, this shot's 90% of the way there, even in kind of a overhead lighting environment with a mixed window light coming in from the side here. Um, we're most of the way there and this would just be some tweaking later. And then from the same wedding here, we've got uh, portrait footage. Um, so this footage would just be a little bit of an adjustment here to the gamma, just bringing it down for a little bit more of a natural contrast. Um, maybe just gonna warm it up just a bit because it was overcast. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with that right away. I really like the look. Um, skin tones are nice, the roll off is smooth um, into the highlights over here. So yeah, then um, onto our last few clips here. Uh, right away, this one again, I'm, I'm very happy with it, but I might warm it up just a bit because um, it was midday, very bright. Um, so yeah, that, that looks good to me. Uh, I could brighten it up just a bit maybe um, because it was midday, like I said. So I like it. Um, I know it might not seem like I'm doing much, but again, this is me showing you how I actually use my LUTs. Um, this was a, a wild one here. So this is going to be a rare instance where I would actually maybe go into my HSL and I would just maybe slightly finesse a color um, because this was, it was a very, very kind of uh, green bed of sand underneath, but this isn't quite the right color. Um, so I'm actually just going to go in here and I'm going to sort of tweak my hue v hue and I'm gonna warm up kind of that, that yellowish green. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of watch my viewing monitor here and just see what I like. Um, and so, let's see. So this is a before and after, and it's very, very subtle, but you can see it on the waveform a lot more clearly. So I just, by warming it up, I kind of um, cooled off some of that lime green sort of look. And I'm pretty happy with that result there. I uh, love the texture on the water here. So um, this one, again, I'm gonna get into a little bit more of an advanced sort of thing that, um, that I like to do here. So this was very bright um, and then very, very dark. It's the reason I took this clip was for demonstration actually, but I'm gonna just start by lifting my, uh, bringing up my lift here. Uh, and kind of bringing it back, uh, bringing back some of that detail. And right when I do it, it starts to kind of flatten out the image. So then I'm gonna go into my shadow and just more, uh, with a more fine-tuned comb kind of um, bring back down the black point. Um, and this is starting to look really good, but now the highlights are kind of muddy for some reason. Um, even though I didn't really touch them. so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it up uh, to emphasize even more the contrast between the two. And so I'm going to bring that up, but then I'm going to go and I'm going to bring down my midtone like I did earlier. Um, but you see when I bring it down, it doesn't do that much. It brings me a little bit of this tree back. Um, but I'm just going to go bring back just a little bit more. And now you can see what that's doing is uh, when I bring that down, when I, when I bring the range just up a little bit, um, it's giving a ton of detail back into the image, even though we actually lifted the levels. So you can see what we're doing here is we're separating that flatness is happening because all of that data is just smushed right up top. And then we're bringing it back down and we're kind of separating that data a little bit. So, um, 
Here we have a very high dynamic range scenario, super bright, very dark. Uh, this one's actually a pretty easy clip. I've, uh, I've loved this clip when I've actually graded it. So uh, lifting the gamma pretty much does it for me. Uh, warming it up just a bit, um, actually saturating it just a bit more. Um, and then actually pushing just a little bit of contrast back in. And this is my last clip here. So lifting the gamma is going to do the trick again, warming it up just a touch. Uh, I might go in and bring down my highlights and then lift my midtones um, here inside of the log wheel and you can see exactly what that does. So just kind of more smoothly rolls off the highlights and it lifts just a little bit more of the midtone area. And again, uh, not a ton of work and I really love the result. So I know this video went a little bit long uh, watching me kind of just work through a handful of clips, but I think this is important for anyone who uses my LUTs and anyone who's interested in them just to see how I actually use them, how I'm setting up DaVinci Resolve, um, kind of a little bit of the project setting color management kind of stuff. Um, as well as just different pieces of my workflow. But um, that's pretty much it for me um, for this video. I hope this really helps you out if you've bought my LUTs or if you've been considering them. Um, if you haven't bought them, it helps me out. It helps support the channel so I can make more videos. I would like to continue making more. Um, so if you have any ideas for me, please leave them below. And with that, thanks for watching uh, this long video if you made it to the end. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.